Hey guys, what's up? This is Stock Retail coming back to you. As you can see today, I'm going to address a little bit of a different topic uh, for the AMC apes who've been following me for quite a while. Um, you know, some of you since 2021 have been around me. Uh, this is not a shift in my view. In fact, I'm going to make that clear today that I'm still very, very much um, an AMC ape and AMC channel, and that is my focus until we win. I have been digging in and doing DD for, I don't know, maybe about a year now. Um, a little deeper into Bitcoin and watching some developments. And it's gotten to the point where I'm even talking to my own family about it in real life. And you know, these three years together, in some ways, we've been family. Um, and I want to just share with my ape friends or anybody else who's listening, perhaps you're not an AMC ape, and you've just found me and you've seen that I, I know a thing or two about finances, um, have some background in that have some education in that. And so you're just curious for my take. So today I just want to talk about, because I'm getting a lot of questions uh, from kind of two angles in the AMC community in particular. One is kind of like, hey man, why are, why are you talking about this so much lately? Um, and, and then also uh, on sort of connected to that note, I just want to kind of myself share with you where I'm coming from and set some, I don't know, feelings at ease because all of us have seen so many people over the years kind of fade away from AMC and get onto other topics. And then you find out, okay, they use the community and, and that's not so great. So um, I'm going to kind of explain why I'm talking about this. Uh, and, and then the other side of this is um, people who perhaps disagree with me and are like, hey, you know, why Bitcoin? What's going on? So I just want to share with you, not in a way that um, invites any kind of need to agree, but just shares with you my point of view, um, a, a, just a real surface level of the DD I've done and the ways that I'm sharing this, even with like my teenage children or the ways that I'm sharing this with my mom, um, you know, I'm, I'm putting my money where my mouth is, so to speak, that um, I'm not going to tell you anything today that I'm not sort of trying to use to explain um, even to my own wife uh, why I'm starting to care about this, what I see as the future. And by the way, too, I'm going to be talking to you more on like a years and decades kind of an outlook. Um, I am not talking about day to day trading. In fact, uh, people who've been around me a little closer in my circles know I'm not really a trader. I'm an investor. I'm someone who has a thesis. Uh, that's why I've stuck around AMC so long. Uh, a little more Warren Buffett style, right? Like he even has that philosophy of, you, you know, you're not, you haven't done your DD if you're not willing to really ride out an investment even when it's down. Um, so that's who I am. I'm the type of person who does DD, takes a very long-term view, um, and then will kind of stick to it like a dog on a bone if I think I'm right. So that's partly why I've lasted in AMC. But let's let's just talk about, and in particular, look at the bottom of this slide where I'm saying, hey, why my point of view is that Bitcoin uh, is better than, or in some cases, currently defeating uh, fiat currencies. If you don't know, fiat um, is effectively, you got to go way back to kind of removing, um, let's say, asset backing to currencies. So, you know, you, you've heard things like money printer go burr and sort of just creating paper money out of thin air. Um, fiat is effectively just backed by sort of the trust of the treasury and the government uh, and perhaps the power of a military. And many nations are, are using fiat currency. So I'm specifically saying fiat so that I'm not just saying the US dollar. I'm talking about the euro, the Chinese renminbi, the you know Brazilian reai. Um, all over the world, you are seeing I'm going to talk about kind of the, the attitudes and actions of policymakers, central bankers, treasurers, politicians, uh, military complexes, a lot of things that I believe have not played out in favor of the people. Uh, and so that is my point of view. That is the angle I'm coming from as I personally look at this is ultimately, do I trust the people in power to be for me and for my children and for my grandchildren? or in effect, do I kind of not trust them? And I think they are for their own gain uh, and their own circles of influence. So that, that's kind of a key question. And you're going to hear me sort of come at it from that angle. But the first thing you, you might have seen a tweet from me recently, I was just having fun with some wording because it hit me. You know, there's this idea of something called debasement. And I'm, I'm kind of going to show you about that here um, in just a second. And so I was like, you know, we, we've got the joke, like people trading from their mom's basement. But the thing is, if you think of like a factory that produces something, and now you think about kind of central bankers as a factory, well, what's their product? Really, guys, in my opinion, their prime product, the thing they produce is debasement. And so that, that's why I was just kind of playing this uh, with these words. Uh, you know, they say we trade from the basement while they're making debasement. Um, 
And so what is debasement? Look at the right here. It's basically kind of the act of making something become less valuable. Now I want you to think about it. I'm going to show you even visually and with data. Uh, if you've been around my channel or my Twitter much, you know I like to use facts and data to back up my point of view. And so I am going to show you some facts um, in a few minutes here. And effectively, for generations, even honestly, you could go back like a thousand years and just look at the history of banks, central bankers, and powerful, uh, let's say, pe people in power over money. Um, there is not a pretty history there. And it is generally not pro-people. It's not for the people uh, and for the masses. And so that, again, is the angle I'm coming from. So just see debasement over here, the action or process of reducing the quality or value of something. And, and you know this already before I even go through this. When you think about, like, you know, um, what your money used to be worth a long time ago and what it's worth now, you already know where I'm going and that this is right. But I'm going to lay it out in kind of real simple terms. So let's actually think about um, just the physical world. And that's actually another aha I've been having. And by the way, if you're kind of a, uh, a crypto bro or a crypto sis, as I say it, um, and you may be saying, man, welcome to the table. We've been talking about this for a decade plus. I understand that. You know, I'm late to this party, but hey, I'm here and I'm understanding and now I am spreading what I believe I've been learning. Um, and I think that's the way. So I, I invite you to think about the physical world and the real thing that I had an aha recently, and you're going to hear me talk about this a little more in the future, you know, I don't know, when the mood strikes me and when I feel I've got new things to share. Um, I believe there's a separation between our money that we use throughout society. I'm talking globally here, like all fiat currency. There's a separation between sort of the real physical world and our currencies. And I'm not sure that separation should exist. And I think that's part of the problem that we've gotten ourselves into, sort of even as a human race, if I could speak that largely. Um, and so I want to talk in terms here for a minute of a physical thing. But you could think about anything, a bicycle, a house, you know, real things that you've been buying. 50 years ago, a loaf of bread was a loaf of bread. And today, a loaf of bread is a loaf of bread. Physically, that thing hasn't changed much. But we kind of seem to look at the world through the lens of money, right? And so through the lens of money, now we translate a loaf of bread as, man, it's a lot more expensive. But I want to challenge that notion because, first of all, if that took a certain amount of wheat and, you know, sifted into flour and sugar and, I, I don't know, whatever you want to put in that bread, perhaps you're making an artisan bread. There, there's an AMC account that I like. He posts bread every day. Sometimes that's fun. So that's why I'm kind of even playing with this. Uh, this idea of give us our daily bread. Um, whatever, like, you know, even let's say nicer bread you want to make, or maybe it's a sourdough. And, you know, in theory, you could have had a, a starter, if you know how sourdough is kind of made, um, that could have lasted for generations. And that physically is really basically the same thing. You've got many of the same ingredients. Nothing has changed about it. But yet it costs a lot more money. And we're like looking at the world through this lens of dollars or, like I said, euro or whatever. Uh, so I want to invite you for a minute to look at the world through the lens of this physical thing. And now I want to kind of, in some ways, engage a debate with some of you to say, all right, you are kind of telling me, hey, retail, I'm not bought in on this Bitcoin thing. No, thanks. So, all right, let's look at two scenarios. You're not bought in. Cool. You go ahead and find the price of a loaf of bread today. And I want you just in, entertain this as a thought exercise. I want you to put a loaf of bread worth of U.S. dollars in your savings account. And I want you to let it sit for five years. And I think we know what's going to happen. So let's talk about that debasement. So you put this U.S. dollars, you know, loaf of bread amount in your savings account. And, you know, here we are. We're going to represent that with George here. And along comes money printer go burr. And along comes the treasury. And along comes the politicians. And all of the policies they make. And all of the actions they take. And all of the debt spiral that we're in. And lo and behold, in five years, you come back and here's the thing. You do not have less dollars in your account. I want to make that really clear. The dollars that you have have shrunk in value. They've been debased. This is debasement. You still have the same amount of dollars you would put in there. You don't have less dollars. The dollar itself is worth less, right? Not less dollars. The dollar is worth less. So when you go to buy a loaf of bread in five years, I want you to look at those two pictures. The loaf of bread hasn't changed. In five years, it's the same loaf of bread, but whoops, you can't buy as much. 
You have the same dollars you had. It's the same loaf of bread. But something changed in the relationship from the physical world to the monetary world. And that something is what's in between here. That's the money printer go burr and the treasury and the politicians and the war machines and all of that. And yes, I'm getting a little bit deep, but go back through hundreds of years of history. That is what central bankers have done to the people. Okay. Now, I'm going to put a loaf worth of bread of US dollars into, a, let's say, a Bitcoin ETF, or I'm going to go into an exchange and buy Bitcoin, and I'm going to let it sit for five years. So what happens? It's that same dollar represented by George, or in this case, let's say, like, I don't know, five bucks or something, uh, and I turn that into Bitcoin today, okay? Um, and I kind of say, and so I don't know if you noticed the animation on the left, with sort of my traffic lights, no thanks to the Fed, no thanks to the Treasury, no thanks to the politician. I'm going to sit out your game. And I'm going to sit over here in a different game uh, in Bitcoin. Well, in five years, I don't get more Bitcoin. I have the same amount. And I can translate it back to dollars because I'm going to go buy that bread. Now we could have a whole conversation about uh, sort of adoption rates and when will Bitcoin itself be able to buy physical things directly. But even I'm just going to take today's world and say, all right, fine, I got to translate that back to dollars. And in five years, I go do that. But notice the Bitcoin did not shrink. It stayed the same, a little bit like a physical asset, you know, like I had invested in gold or copper or silver or something. So it's going to give me more dollars because the dollars shrank, but the Bitcoin didn't. And so I want you to see, I didn't get more Bitcoin, but I was able to turn it into more dollars because the dollar shrunk. In It's all about relationships. The dollar shrunk in relationship to the bread, but guess what? It shrunk in relationship to the Bitcoin too. That, that's a thesis that I have, but I mean, you can watch that. That's played out now for 15 straight years. Uh, I'd like to think that's some kind of representative sample. And so I'm going to buy that bread, but you know what? I'm probably going to be able to buy a lot more and maybe even some fish on the side and get a little protein for myself. So that's just a really simple example just to, you know, and go through, challenge, decide if you even agree with me. But the idea is, for sure, it's, it's like not even debatable. It's just hundreds of years of history that say fiat currency will become debased. It will become less valuable over time. That just happens. And let me show you that. You can go find an inflation calculator. I'm sure there's quite a few online. Here's one that I used um, that effectively just takes you. I don't know if it's small font for you. You can kind of see at the bottom of the left here. Uh, the U.S. government CPI data. And now, first off, I'd love to put a disclaimer on that. A lot of us believe that that data is a little bit misleading and that inflation is far worse than what they're reporting in that data. Um, I have a friend from Argentina who likes to remind us that that's kind of the game they played in Argentina for a long time. They'd publish these numbers, but everybody knew that price of bread. Um, and I'd love to say differently. You know, we say, oh, the price of bread was going up or, you know, the gas you put in your car, your electric bill. And I want to keep just challenging myself and I'm challenging you with me, uh, perhaps shifting thinking to it's not that electricity or gas or bread was getting more expensive. It's that your currency was becoming less valuable. That's really what inflation is, guys. And then once you understand that, you start to say, oh, wait a second. If my currency is becoming less valuable and buys less bread and buys less electricity and buys less gas and puts less food on my kid's table, who's doing that to me? Now you start to ask the right questions, in my opinion. So let's look at U.S. dollar debasement just in the past 50 years. So I went back to 1974. And you can see, so you can see, like, you can plug in to the calculator here. And from 1974, let's say I put $5 in, that loaf of bread, and I let it sit for 50 years, uh, you would only have 80 cents now. So that $5 back in 1974 is now only worth basically 80 cents in terms of what it would buy. And so I really want you to think about, but wait, hey, I still have $5 in my account. So again, those $5 shrunk by 84%. Is there an investment you would like to make that in 50 years will be down 84%? I don't want to do that. Why are you doing that? So this, in a nutshell, tells you why I've, I've gotten so firmly in the corner of Bitcoin lately. And by the way, what I did too is I went and read all 120 pages of the emails between Marty and uh, Satoshi. And I did uh, research and I researched having coming and why are they making the ETFs now. And some of you in AMC know that I have a thesis that I've been kind of talking about for a while 
um, in terms of cleaning up AMC tokens and all the problems with FTX and Binance. I'm not going to get into that today, but that is related. Uh, but that is not why I'm talking to my wife and friends and kids and mom about Bitcoin. I am talking about it because I believe the U.S. dollar, uh, because that's where I live, but other fiat currencies too, will be debased by the central bankers forever, unless something different happens. Um, and I want to be in something different. So that's the idea. You can see clearly the data shows it year over year over year. And you can kind of see too, we're accelerating. So look here from 2020 to 24, you can see that starts to sharpen again. And I think a lot of us know, I mean, if you're watching anything about debt spirals and uh, bond yield rates and a lot of that stuff and everything going on in Japan as well, by the way, um, I think there are real problems coming for fiat currencies. And there's a real reckoning happening around the world in terms of just how society has funded itself and who we've allowed to be in power and the policies we've allowed them to make. Uh, it, it's kind of not working. And so I'd rather be in something that has some store of value. That, that's a phrase that's worth losing. Uh, and I will say, you know, another sign that says, hey, the bankers are who's in control of fiat, and I'm not so sure they're in control of Bitcoin. That's a point people like to challenge me on, and I'll talk more about too, you know, who's in Bitcoin, and is that really for retail? Um, you know, look at Jamie Dimon, right? Like he is tied to Epstein money. Um, I don't have to say how gross that is and how this is probably someone who should be locked up. Um, if he's tied to banking with Epstein, I don't have to explain again how just disgusting that is. So, you know, he bashed Bitcoin, called it a pet rock. By the way, if you're an AMC, uh, I mean, probably a coincidence in this case. I know in the past I've said I don't believe in coincidences, but I do find it odd that, the, you know, one of the problematic sort of short and distort accounts uh, historically for AMC has been one called Pet Rock and uh, has kind of a group that we, uh, some of us feel that that person kind of bosses around. So interesting choice of words. Uh, I think probably unrelated, but uh, I don't know, who knows? At least it, it certainly popped up the idea in my mind. Uh, so, you know, he, he is not in favor of Bitcoin and does not like it. Um, but, well, I already talked about Epstein. So then, and you saw Vanguard kind of said, no, thanks, we're not going to be in Bitcoin. And then not long after, uh, you know, CEO had to retire. So these are some folks who are at, in the halls of power and connected to banking and are not pro Bitcoin. So, you know, I get that question, hey, what about retail? And I just want to continue to share again why I'm looking at this and why I'm telling, you know, I am retail. I'm an average Joe. I'm talking to you from the suburbs in Oregon right now. I'm not in some mega million dollar condo in New York or DC or whatever. Um, so uh, just a few contrasts, like let's look at the US dollar, but I really, I think you could look at any fiat currency here. So US dollar can print at will. That's kind of the money printer go burr. You know, you can create the dollar out of thin air, basically. Uh, it says Bitcoin. But uh, I'll just hope that you guys will tolerate the, um, the typo there. Uh, all right. So Bitcoin, you know, you don't get coins unless you're solving with proof of work. And it's, it's becoming more and more challenging. And so we can talk about having and all of that kind of stuff. And so US dollar related to that, kind of an infinite supply. Bitcoin has a finite supply. So think of it more like, uh, you know, like a precious metal or something. It's starting to behave that way, um, only a lot more uh, violent to the upside. Uh, we've kind of already said U.S. dollar is an ever-increasing rate of supply. Um, so I guess I hadn't said that. But I mean, you have seen over the past... In fact, I think I showed in a video once, if you look at... Uh, I think it's called like the Fed in China or something like that. Um, I wish I could remember the title of the video. It's not long ago, a couple months ago. And you would see I showed you um, all of the debt that has been created in the U.S. Uh, like if you look at, say, the first, I don't know, pretty much a couple hundred years, and then you look at like the last 20 or so, and you would just see the insane rate of debt and the insane rate of sort of money printing that we have been doing. Um, so whereas the US dollar is sort of increasing its rate of supply, the Bitcoin, because of the notion of having, is decreasing its rate of supply. And so just think of the laws of supply and demand there and, and scarcity and, and something storing its value. Uh, US dollar is definitely centralized, and we call them central bankers for a reason. Uh, Bitcoin is decentra decentralized. I understand that's the footnote here. You can debate what level it's decentralized to. Um, and certainly I understand that people will make the point of, you know, who has sort of hoarded Bitcoin and who owns a lot of it. Uh, but it is a decentralized network, at least the network in general. Um, 
the US dollar is, you know, susceptible to sort of derivatives, FX trading, spoofing, all kinds of, in my opinion, fraud. Um, and that's where you get into all these financial instruments that people have created through the years. Um, whereas Bitcoin, I do not think is quite so susceptible to that. And, and not only that, but, you know, again, go through and read those emails that I uh, referenced. The whole network checks against fraud, you know, using all the nodes, you can't double spend and some things like that. So it just at least on those items, it's kind of like every every check leans to the Bitcoin side or Bitcoin, if you want to call it that. All right. So uh, fiat, I already said central bankers, politicians, globalist, unelected groups, you know, the WEF, the IMF and, and militaries. Right. That's who backs fiat currency is uh, sort of the threat of defense. I'll say it at least in a positive way, uh, but perhaps even the threat of offense. Uh, whereas Bitcoin, you know, there's the notion of your keys, your crypto, right? So it's a very different world from central bankers just being able to print at will and politicians behind them. And here's the thing. So I, I, I shared with kind of a, a, um, an account today. We, we've talked once or twice. I wouldn't call us close, but we, we've talked here and there. And so, and, but the thing is, I've seen this um, challenge consistently. Uh, and so I want to just, I don't know, bring it out and let's talk about it. And again, here, I'm not asking for agreement. I'm just sharing with you what I think. Uh, people kind of say, well, you know, the big guys, the big funds, that's who owns Bitcoin. So you're just playing into their hands and whatever. Well, who owns gold? Who owns copper? Who owns lithium? Who owns silver? And I, I said this to one other account, I don't know, three weeks ago or something, and they were challenging me a little bit. And I said, it's interesting to me that you're using the argument, well, rich people own Bitcoin, so I don't want to own Bitcoin. And so is how's that different? Rich people own the gold, they own the copper, they own the lithium, they own the silver, they own the, you know, you've seen even like hedge funds are buying up real estate. That That is the history of the human race, guys. But then I just ask, okay, but what's different about Bitcoin versus those things? And I still keep coming back to the idea of the network, the idea of the proof of work, the idea of blockchains and decent decentralization. And at the very least, if I just simplify it and I go, Fiat currency is controlled by the central bankers and the politicians. Bitcoin is not. Um, so a few notes um, and just kind of future discussion that maybe we'll have. Um, again, I, I'm really an AMC account. In fact, I'll just, why don't I do point two first? I should have just made it point one. For the AMC apes. I mean, I'm not going to show positions. We don't do that. But I am still more than 99% of my investments are AMC. And by the way, I do not recommend that. You know, back in 2021, I used to talk about that a lot more openly. I had gone all in. Um, boy, that is not recommended and has been a hard journey for me, right? I mean, you you could troll me on that, frankly, and people have. And I don't care. I've got my thesis. I'm sticking around. I am definitely AMC not leaving. Uh, so if you're seeing me talk about this, it just is something that is a growing care and concern for me. And he, again, the lens I come through is I have three children and they're going to one day have children. And I picture them living in a world controlled by these same central bankers. And I'll even go so far as to say, uh, I believe some in those circles are flat out evil. Like, yes, I'm saying that out loud. I, I believe some have evil designs and evil purposes and do not work for what I'll call the light. And if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I care about uh, things being better in this world and us uplifting each other and working for what I call the light. I mean, that's just in something that is deeply uh, in my heart. And so I am getting louder and louder about this for a lot of personal reasons. Um, and again, you could disagree with me, but that is where I'm coming from. It does not mean I'm shifting off the AMC thesis. I mean, good grief. I just made that pretty long. I think it's 43 minute video or something go tearing through AMC's financials and showing you why I'm bullish. So if you if you want a reminder of my position, uh, go go watch that. That's I think the last video just before this. All right. The first point, though, and, and this is a matter of some contention on Twitter, people like to, you know, post receipts and be right about stuff. Um, you know, today even was a dip on Bitcoin, right? And so I had a little bit of back and forth with one or two people. And, and, and honestly, I called some people out because I saw some accounts who had said, like, when Bitcoin was in the 40,000s, okay, it's going to be a rug pull. Well, you know, here we are, and today we dipped to 63,000. So if you were calling a rug pull at 40, and a so-called dip to 63, and you're posting receipts on that, like, it's kind of a cell phone, because, you know, I don't have to 
spell out that 63,000 is a whole lot higher than 40. Um, and that's all in a matter of <laughs> barely more than a week. Um, so the point though is uh, I am looking at this in years and even decades. You know, I just talked to you about like my grandchildren, like my oldest kid is still a teenager and here I am talking about my grandchildren. We, I'm not there yet. So I'm taking a very forward looking view and saying, this is what I believe is the future that fiat currencies will continue to be debased, devalued, uh, and I don't trust central bankers. So I am moving my family and my future generations towards something a little different and little bits at a time. Like I said, I'm still 99 plus percent AMC. I'm here till we win. Um, third point, do DD. I you know it does, goes without saying, do not trust me. I mean, there's no trust me bros on my channel. I'm not saying guys for sure I'm right. You can't question. I I'm just sharing with you a point of view because I've gotten asked enough. And this is why I am landing in this place. And so I just invite you to do the DD. You know, for me, I told you this has been like even the last year, it's been a journey. It's been me digging. I used to be where a lot of you are. Uh, hey, crypto is just a liquidity play, they'll rug pull. It's just the way to steal money from retail, blah, 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 blah. Well, also, by the way, that's the whole point of buy and hold originally was, you know, if you're trading, you can get beaten by the algorithms and high frequency trading and large funds and a lot of things and get bumped out of your position. Uh, if you're taking a long-term view, as long as your thesis is correct, and that's a big, big if, right, um, then you're going to win. And, and that's the point. The longer you can wait, the more you can beat um, the algorithms because algos are kind of a second to second and even a nanosecond to nanosecond. I can't beat that. Some of you are great traders. Um, and I even talk to a few who I encourage and say, hey, I'm impressed with your skills. You know, you do you because you're good at it. But that's not my game. I'm an investor. I'm not a trader. And so I'm, I'm talking about years and decades, but do your DD, figure that out for yourself. Uh, read those emails. I've mentioned that a few times in this email. Research having and what that means. Uh, research proof of work and blockchain and sort of fraud, um, you know, protections and fail safes. And, and as you research that, think about the fact that Sam went to jail and the fact that CZ is going to jail. Like if you create uh, fraudulent statements of work, basically proof of work, um, and you try to commit fraud in the blockchain, it's going to catch you. And so that's a little different too, because you can commit fraud uh, with the dollar if you're a powerful enough person, eh, maybe you get away with it. Like we've even seen people spoofing, let's say gold trading, right? Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan and others have kind of had some famous cases the last few years. Well, they didn't go to jail. They just kind of had a fine, they paid and they moved on. Well, I think with some of this stuff now, it's a little bit different and you can get caught a lot better. Uh, so just that simple question, do you trust these people with your children's and grandchildren's future? Because I don't. That's it. I mean, that's it's that simple for me. Um, if you want to find out more, so I have used a hashtag a lot on Twitter, uh, The Great Unwinding. You can go see more. Uh, look in my highlighted tweets. That's just one of those I'm showing on the left where I spell out a little more about the, the tokens and um, my thesis on why, um, why this was all going to happen. Um, you know, I started saying that Bitcoin was going to run, I think it was high 30s, low 40s, about the time I started getting a little more vocal about all of this. And, you know, here we are. So, so far, things seem to be playing out. Um, got more to go before I can dunk too hard on that. Um, but I don't know, I've laid out my receipts, we will see what happens. Uh, or on YouTube, you can see on the right, so go to playlists, um, and you can find a playlist that I'll actually add this video to as well. But you can see there's already five other videos in there that kind of spell out more about the thesis, more about what I think is going on. Um, and uh, by the way, if, if you don't know what I mean when I say tokens, um, just to, I'll give you the 10 second version because a lot of people have heard me talk about it already. The same day the buy button was removed by Robinhood for GameStop and AMC, uh, uh, the same night really that Vlad and Citadel were meeting and all of that stuff, uh, FTX and Binance, really Binance at that time, uh, were creating these tokens that um, have been largely, largely discussed on the internet. Um, fast forward to kind of June-ish, it's more FTX than Binance. You, you get some companies like, a, there's a German company, CM Equity AG, you get Bittrex. Um, in this playlist, I've got whole videos that lay out the timeline for all of that and show you some of what happened. Um, so you can learn the history of tokens with us and how I believe that's connected to a lot of the fraud and, and manipulation and uh, have buried a lot of uh, the problem. Uh, and that it, one day that comes home to roost and that we may be nearing that place. Um, so check that out. 
Uh, but that's why I talk a lot about tokens. And you can also find me on Reddit in 2021 talking about that as well. Uh, so lots going on there. Ultimately, I keep boiling it down. Now back for the AMC apes. Uh, you know, it's a company that's not going bankrupt. I believe we're going to win. So let's go.